fundamentally, human beings are our hands. That's how we interact with our environment. In a very real sense, the efficiency of the astronaut is dictated by how effective his gloves are. The gloves are miniaturized, little spacesuits in them of themselves. They have a head and arms and legs. Virtually every type of joint that you find in the body is just miniaturized in the hand. That combined with the bulk that's necessary for spacesuit gloves because of thermal insulation and micrometeoroid protection becomes very restrictive for astronauts. This is a vacuum chamber glove box. It mimics the pressure differential that you'd have inside a suit. You can test and feel what a pressurized glove would do and how it would perform. There's a variety of different range of motion tests that you can do, touching thumb to pinky. This that allows perfect opposition. And um, that's a real challenge to accomplish with a pressurized glove. They're really complicated. There's a lot of parts and pieces, and it's all miniaturized. So if you, you can scale up fairly easily, but it's kind of hard to miniaturize things. It takes about the same amount of time to build two gloves as it does the rest of the suit. My philosophy has been pushing towards making the suit look as much like a human body as possible and move like a human body as much as possible. I have a background making costumes and props. Uh, I worked in the theater industry in New York for a long time. Nick has tried on every spacesuit, American and Russian and European. Nick is an engineer. He got a degree in aerospace engineering from the Moscow Aviation Institute back in the 80s. Final Frontier Design has about a thousand square feet here at the Navy Yard. Both Nick and I want to go to space. I have to do it if I'm making spacesuits. Both Nick and my real concept of a life's work would be to have a suit that you've had some part of walk on another planet would be um, really spectacular. Seeing the suit is an identification of humanity moving beyond the Earth and accomplishing great things. I love Brooklyn. You know, the community of people who work in Red Hook, especially in this, you know, it's, I can always bounce ideas off people around here. I've been in the neighborhood since 1959. Came from Bedside downtown. The neighborhood changed a lot since that time because during that time it was real crazy. I use soy based thing just so I can be uh, environmentally conscious. This press is called Golden Pearl, old style. 